Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're doing a subscriber asked question on zones. In particular, what does a USDA zone mean compared to a Canadian zone and how to apply zones to the garden. So I've done some videos on this in the past. Um, it is about two years old now. So I feel like it's time to update it. I wasn't nearly as camera confident and I wasn't the best at editing either at the time. When it comes to zones or USDA government zones versus Canadian zones, there are some slight differences. Now this zone world is not a linear measure. Every country measures their zones differently. So in Canada, we take into control or we take into consideration things like minimum temperatures, annual rainfalls, frost-free total days, and elevation even, and a whole bunch of other variables. With the USDA system, they are just using the min temperatures or minimum temperatures. And this is why we see these, like this disconnect in zones. And you know, Australia's gonna have a different system than the UK will, and everyone's just slightly different. But a general rule of thumb is that a zone three, Agriculture, Agri-Foods Canada, is a USDA zone four. So it's usually always about plus one. So if you are a Canadian zone and you wanna compare yourself to maybe an influencer or YouTuber in an American zone, if they say USDA five, that generally means a Canada zone four. If you have um, you know, someone in California that says, I'm in USDA zone nine, that means that they're gardening likely at a Agriculture, Agri-Foods Canada zone eight. So you can see it's plus one or minus one depending on your situation. So Americans that watch my channel, um, I'm, a U, I'm a USDA zone four, uh, Canadian zone three. So just to put that into a little bit of perspective there, but again, it's not linear. So um, I may be a USDA zone four for the most part, but I may receive drastically different levels of rainfall or um, just in general frost-free days than someone in an actual USDA zone four. So that is just something to keep in mind, but it is relatively linear across the board. But as a gardener, what you actually care about is your total number of frost-free days and zone really only applies when you're selecting a perennial. So if you're selecting perennials for the garden, whether that be in a rhizome, root, or a bulb form, seed form, such as poppies, for example, or if you are buying an entire plant, what you're looking for is a zone that matches your exact zone. So for me, it would have to say zone three or less. So you can, in many cases, grow up to two zones less than the actual zone you're growing in. It's very, very rare that you're going to be able to grow something zone four in zone three. The exception to that is if you heavily mulch the area and then you use some sort of mini greenhouse system around that perennial and then you snow pack that area like no tomorrow. So there are ways to maybe push it, but for the most part, general rule is your zone or two less. When we get into really warm, American zones or, you know, Vancouver type zones, you actually have, may have some more issues going lower than you would higher. And the reason for that is because the vernalization that needs to take place with bulbs and with perennials can only take place at those lower zones. So that is something to keep in mind if you go with the lower zone um, options. Bob is distracting me in the, in the side of the corner of my eye. <laughs> so when it comes to um, zones, that's all we need to know. As gardeners, actually what we care about is what the frost-free days are in our zone. So zone three in Canada, whether it be A or B, the number of frost-free days is going to change depending on your city or your town. So what you wanna look at is not necessarily frost-free days in zone three. What you're actually looking for, and I have an entire resource over on the Gardening in Canada website where I list out the frost-free days. A zone three can have a varying number of total frost-free days. It does not have to be exactly 107 across the board. Saskatoon can have 107, give or take, but Blaine Lake, uh, farther north where my other garden is, is you know 98 days. So it can vary, despite the fact that they're all zone three. So I encourage you to actually Google your 
area, your city, and find out the number of frost free days. What you're going to do with this information is you're going to plan your seeds that you purchase around that. So West Coast Seeds lists out, for example, and I'm using West Coast Seeds because that's I'm a brand ambassador for them. So when it comes to West Coast, it says 70 days OP. That is what you're looking for. You want to make sure the total number of days is under the number of growing degree days in your area. Even if it says 120 days and you say, well, I'll just start that pumpkin indoors earlier. No, you cannot do that. You have to get the actual number of days in your zone or less or less is the key there. So 75 for those cayenne peppers are good to grow in my zone. Then what you're gonna do is you're going to follow the information on the backs of the packages. So this says 75 days OP, but it's also going to say two to four weeks before last frost, or I think this one actually says four to six weeks before last frost. And then what you wanna do is you wanna take your first frost day, so here in zone three or in Saskatoon, it's actually June 10th is considered the last, uh, or the first frost free day. And then you're going to count back from there. So you're gonna count your weeks back to determine when six to eight weeks is, and that's when you're going to start your cayenne peppers. So that means, um, despite the fact that it says 75 days, and I've done lots of videos on this, it means nothing because it's the GDDs. So that is what you want to aim for. That is what your zones should be used for. And more specifically, you should look up them in your city or in your town because that's going to give you a little bit better information. But that's all I have for you guys on zones. I hope this helps you out just a little bit when trying to decipher what your favorite influencers on Instagram or YouTube or wherever may be talking about or where they're coming from in regards to their grow zones. And I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.